Welcome to Book Your Success, the online show for entrepreneurs, by entrepreneurs, about entrepreneurs. This show spotlights authors who have books which provide information, innovation, and inspiration needed by successful entrepreneurs and business professionals. It includes a special focus on how authors use their book to market and build their brand. Let's join host and entrepreneur Anita Paul with today's guest. Hello and welcome to Book Your Success. I'm Anita Paul, the author's midwife with writeyourlife.net. We are glad that you joined us today uh, for this episode of Book Your Success. You know that we're all about for and interested in authorpreneurs. And for those of you who are regular watchers of the show, you know that I'm usually not here alone. There's usually a guest, a phenomenal author, uh, who is our guest and we talk about their book and their process to write the book, how they use their book in their business or for their platform. But thanks to the genius of our producer, Pamela Adams Alexander, we decided to do something different this time. We're going to do a segment that we hope will repeat called Ask Anita or Ask the Midwife, as someone so nicely suggested, uh, where we're going to actually take your questions about publishing and writing and marketing and leveraging your book. Um, as you know, that I call, uh, consult and coach with professionals and entrepreneurs through my Write Your Life program, and I help them develop their content and also get through the publishing process and uh, marketing their book. And so I get a lot of questions all the time from people about a number of things related to writing and publishing a book. And so we're going to cover some of those today. We sent out a call on social media through Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter to ask you for your questions. And we actually do have some of those questions from you, so we appreciate that. And also in my uh, weekly e-newsletter called Book Your Success, so appropriately named after this show, um, we sent out a call from some of those subscribers and they submitted some questions as well. So we'll get to those. And of course, for all of you who are joining us live in the chat room, we invite you to uh, identify yourself and to also post some questions in the chat room room so that we can answer those. Hopefully we'll get to them live on the air. We've got a lot of questions. Don't know if we'll get to all of them. I have a nice little stack of cards here with questions. Um, but people are always curious about the publishing process. How do you make it work for you? What is this whole thing about self-publishing? And I typically do uh, specialize in the self-publishing aspect of the publishing industry. And there's a lot to know and a lot to get familiar with and that's why I get all these questions and I'm very happy to answer your questions and I'm going to start with a question that I get all the time but before I get to that question actually I want to acknowledge our sponsor for the show of course which is the Intellectual Exchange Group LLC they are actually the um, you know the folks that host us here in this fantastic studio uh, they provide audio engineering courses for youth and for adults as well so you can learn how to uh, do sound and video as well they offer some phenomenal courses and some great instruction you can reach them at 404-234-4301 and I'll mention that phone number again a little later in the show but thanks again to the Intellectual Exchange Group LLC we're glad that they're our sponsor for today so we're going to jump into our first question, and I get this question all the time from prospective clients and from um, just folks who are curious, inquiry minds who want to know, which is, how much does it cost to self-publish a book? How much does it cost? Perfectly uh, valid question to ask, and I think as with anything else that we're going to purchase, we always want to know how much does it cost, because that sort of helps solidify it in your mind of whether I can afford this or when I'll be able to afford it. And I typically tell people, so hold on to your seats, and if this shocks you, you may not be ready for self-publishing, but you really should plan for a minimum of $3,000, a minimum of $3,000, and I'd really feel more comfortable telling you $5,000, but the minimum of $3,000 to $5,000 um, really is a an industry standard and quite frankly if you ask 10 people this question you get 20 different answers but I would suggest three to five thousand dollars as a starting point and what does that cover you say that covers you getting a professional book 
So this is not where you just bring in some friends who you know who may look at your manuscript and say, this looks good, go for it, or someone who says, oh, I'll, I'll draw your illustrations for your book. This is incorporating and in, uh, establishing a very professional team of experts who are familiar with the self-publishing process. So that three to $5,000 uh, includes your copy editing, with a professional copy editor, not your uh, niece or nephew who is an English student at the local college. Uh, that includes professional graphic design for the cover of your book. It includes the interior layout and formatting of your book. And this is really important, particularly if you have any kinds of illustrations or images or graphics uh, that will go inside your book, such as tables or charts or maps or photographs, anything like that, they need to be situated on the pages properly. And that takes a professional to do that, someone with experience to do those things. Um, and of course it includes all, all of your registration, the ISBN number, your copyright registration and so forth. So all of that is what I consider the production aspect of publishing a book. And honestly, I say account for three to $5,000 minimum to get that book published that does not include, of course, the expert coaching and consulting that you'll get from someone like me, and it does not include the printing of your book, so you'll have to budget for that as well. So again, how much does it cost to publish your book? Three to five minimum, it could go a little bit higher depending on who you um, bring on to help you with that, but it's, a wor it's an investment that's well worth it, and that's how you have to look at it as an investment, not necessarily just an expense. What if I just have Microsoft Word? What if I have Microsoft Word? We have sort of the uh, <laughs> the galley over here. <laughs> that was our producer, Pamela Adams Alexander, with that wonderful question. What if I just want to do it in Word? Well, you know, if you just want to do it in Word, you probably don't really want to be a real self-published author. You want to produce something that may be um, a report uh, that you probably should offer for free to people. <laughs> Pam is laughing because Pam is also a published author um, and she knows what the process is like. It is not something that you just, you know, type it up in Word, throw in some clip art and send it uh, to your local, you know, uh, print and copy shop uh, and, you know, they produce a PDF or something like that. It really is much more involved in that. And she knows that. So. <laughs> So for those of you who are interested in just like sending your Word document out and saying, hey, I'm a published author, uh, don't go there. Just, you know, if you want to do that, then make it a free report that you offer to your prospective clients or the people who follow you, folks who come to your speaking engagements, and do that. And maybe when you are ready to actually self-publish a book, you can start with that Word document or that PDF document. We also have in the studio, and he's silent right now, uh, Nash Alexander. So he may be chiming in with some uh, funky comments from the peanut gallery also. <laughs> but I'm going to take it to the next question, which is another one that I commonly get asked because oftentimes with uh, new authors particularly, and especially those I work with who are professionals and entrepreneurs, busy schedules, and time is an issue. So a lot of times people ask, how long does it take? to publish my book. You know, like how much time do I have to invest in this process? Because, you know, I'm working, I have a family, I have volunteer activities, I have a business, whatever. How long does it take? So I tell people that it varies. It could take anywhere from three to 12 months, although depending on how quickly you write or how competent your team is, it could take longer than that. But I tell people about three to 12 months and three is really tight. Um, and three months suggests that you already have a very tight and well-developed uh, manuscript that's really already ready to go to uh, copy editing phase. So I suggest you count on three to 12 months, probably six to 12 or nine to 12 is more realistic when we're talking about producing a very, very professionally uh, done book. So count on that. Um, in many of my presentations and in my consulting, of course, I counsel with people on how to manage your time during that book production process, the fact that you need to develop a timeline for your writing, and making sure that you are realistic about how long it takes for your team to do the things that they want to do. The last thing you want to do is rush your copy editor or your layout person or your graphic designer or even the printer. You don't want to rush other people just because all of a sudden you feel the urge that I've got to get this book out right away. So be sure to um, give yourself plenty of time to get the process done and do it right. Okay? 
Anita. So, yes, Nash. There is a question here in the chat room. The chat room has a question. Who and in the chat room has a question? This is from Jared. All right, Jared, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Says, Anita, I have more than one book to write, different subjects. Okay. How do you decide which to write first? Jared, that's a great question. And I would probably need a little bit more information. So my first question back to you would be, how are you going to use your book? Why are you writing this book? Do you have a business? Um, is this going to be a novel? And you want to kind of just feel good that you've written this novel. So I'm going to hope that you have what I consider a platform, which is something you want to be known for or known as. It could be a cause that you're promoting or a business that you want to build. Uh, typically, uh, my clients, again, those professionals and entrepreneurs, use self-publishing to build their brand that they already have established, to enhance an expertise that they want to project, and then to position their platform. So if that's what you want to do with your books, one book, two books, five books, think about the one that most closely relates to your business or whatever your platform is, and the one that will um, satisfy your ultimate goals. So your goal, perhaps, and this is something you got to think about, could be to make some money, get more clients, build some visibility. Which of those book ideas is most going to lead you in the direction of achieving your goals? And that's how you decide which book to release first. And hopefully the, the subsequent book or books can support that as well. So I hope that answers your question. And Nash, thanks for calling that out. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. We had a question come in from Facebook when we sent out our call for questions. And this is from, I'm not sure if it's Noel or Noel, so forgive me if I say your name incorrectly. But the question is, <laughs> I see that you're called the author's midwife. Interesting trait name. So tell us, how is writing and publishing a book like giving birth? Wow. How is it like giving birth? <laughs> and Pam and Nash laugh <laughs> right on time. <laughs> I do get that question a lot. And I think about the whole book birthing process very much like uh, giving birth to a child. So you've got the conception issue, right? I'm so not in that. That's not me. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> Completely. But the, I look at conception as really the idea for your book, right, Jared? You've got this idea for a book. You've conceived it in your mind. Oftentimes that conception comes from outside of you. Someone says, oh, my gosh, you're such an expert at whatever. You should write a book about that. Or, oh, you have such a great story. Your life story is amazing. You should write a book, a memoir or an autobiography. So that's really the conception. And that seed gets planted in your mind and you're thinking about it all the time. And at the point at which you can't stand to not have the book, that's when you know you need to start writing this book. So all the other processes and the, the phases that you go through, you know, the different um, stages of pregnancy and birth and that kind of thing, I think they really do mirror the publishing process pretty closely. You've got the germination, right? So you're thinking about it, you're getting used to the idea of becoming an author, you're thinking about the outline and the content of your book, which is really cool. And then you know, women go into that nesting phase, right? When it's kind of close to the, the baby being born, you're fixing everything up and making it look pretty and you're doing all of that stuff. Well, that's the planning process and that's the getting used to and the preparing um, for becoming an author. Um, labor pains, you know, I just wrote down a couple of things that people can relate to, right? Labor pains, and that's when things get tough. Sometimes they do in the process. You think it's all gonna go smoothly, but it gets tough. There's some rocky roads in there, right? So you got some labor pains. Oh, I don't know it's gonna be this hard. I can't believe that my copy editor struck that out of my manuscript. I was so in love with that sentence or that chapter or that paragraph, and, and Pam is over here going, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> been there, done that, right? So anybody who's ever published a book, you know how that feels. So those are some of the labor pains or when your, um, you know, your, your proofer decides, oh, that doesn't look good in the layout, whatever it might be. Those are painful things whenever you have to pull something out. Then, of course, you see the ultrasound, right? That first little proof copy, and you hold it in your hand. You go, oh, this is my book. I love it. It's so pretty, right? When you get that first copy, you love it. And there's so many parallels between book publishing and giving birth. And I could go on and on, but trust me. I earned the, 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 the moniker, the author's midwife, because it really does. We go through that process. And trust me, I deal with the ups and downs of people. It's very emotional, very similar to uh, having a baby. But it's a lot of fun. When you finally get that book in your hand, you absolutely love it. And you're more than happy to share it with other people uh, so they can enjoy your uh, success as well. So thanks for that question. Noel or Noel, who provided that on Facebook. 
And I want to say hi to some of the other folks who are in the chat room. Hey again, Jared, and then hello to Sherry. And I know there are some others of you out there, and I want you to chime in, identify yourselves, and be sure to ask us a question here on Book Your Success. We're glad to be answering your questions on this segment of Ask Anita. We'll see if we can carry this through. I'm loving it. <laughs> You're loving it, Pam? Loving it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> These are questions we get all the time. I know Pam gets them as well. Like I said, she is a published author. Uh, her book is called God is in Your Inbox, and it is a wonderful book <laughs> of inspiring uh, comments and emails and poems and things that we've all seen on uh, on email over time. But she just kind of wraps it around and puts a theme around it, and it's a beautiful book. So I encourage you to, to order that book from Amazon.com. I also want to mention to you again that I do have a free electronic newsletter. It comes out weekly. It's called Book Your Success. And you can subscribe to it at writeyourlife.net. And free tips, free resources, all kinds of cool information about publishing a book and what the whole writing and publishing process is all about. I'd love to have you on our subscriber list to hear from you, your questions as well, and um, just to get that information out to you. So we're going to take our next question. This one is from... Marie. Uh, Marie, I think this question came to us from our subscriber list, so thanks so much for asking this question. She says, I'm considering writing uh, a book and having it published. Do you recommend traditional publishing or self-publishing and why? So I get this question often as well, and a lot of people don't know the difference between traditional publishing and self-publishing. There's pros and cons to both. So if you think about traditional publishing as uh, the process of uh, identifying and, and connecting with an agent, a literary agent, who will then shop your either your manuscript or your um, book proposal to a traditional publisher. It could be some of the big names you've heard, Random House, Simon & Schuster, and so forth. Uh, we call those the big New York uh, trade um, publishers. They've got to love it. They take on your idea. They pay you in advance, so there's some issues around that because people still think they're going to get a million dollar advance, which doesn't usually happen for regular folks. And, um, and then they take on the process and the expense of producing your book. So all those things I just mentioned in terms of the copy editing, the cover design, the layout, the printing, and the distribution, which is a huge uh, benefit of using a traditional publisher. Now, some of the cons is that you typically don't maintain the rights to your book, your content, the title, all of that stuff, and anything, any other products uh, that could come from that, such as movie rights and um, you know other types of items that are related to your book. Versus self-publishing or um, independent publishing, which is you take on the expense, the responsibility, and the control, quite frankly, over the entire project. So you invest in it, you bring on your team of consulting and coach someone who knows the process and can help you develop a qualified team of uh, experts who can help you with the copy editing, the graphic design, and so forth. You invest in that, you decide, and it's all your final decision on the content that goes in, the title of the book, what the cover looks like, all of that stuff, how it's distributed and when, and you maintain the rights uh, to everything that deals with your book. So if you decide to turn your characters in your book into plush toys or you decide you want to shop that uh, you know, manuscript out to someone to turn it into a movie or an animated series or a TV series, you maintain the rights to all of that and you can determine the direction of that. So that's the difference in a nutshell. There are more differences and more pros and cons for both between traditional and self-publishing. Um, Again, self-publishing to me is just growing, well, not just to me, but truly, factually, it's growing exponentially. I think there's a lot more people who are um, introduced to self-publishing. They get it. it they, it's a chance for you to get your book to market much faster. And so for the clients that I work with who are professionals and they want to use self-publishing to establish their platform, they want to do it quickly. They don't want to wait, um, you know, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36 months for a traditional publisher to decide that they like their idea and they're willing to invest in it. They wanna just get it in there, get the idea done, get the book produced, and get it to market very quickly. So self-publishing really does help you get your product to market much quickly. You get to maintain control and maintain the rights to your product. So Marie, thanks for asking that question. We appreciate it. Pam, what do you think about self-publishing versus traditional publishing? I'm, I love the idea <laughs> of self-publishing 
because you do keep all the controls because my thought is if I'm gonna do all the work anyway to truly market it and get it out there well I might as well keep the controls might and I well. like that like you mentioned all the products and things I may want to do with it because I'm always coming up with 50 ideas oh. I don't have to run Fantasy them by anybody. idea queen. Exactly. <laughs> you get your ideas, you get your content, your book is yours, yep. and that's what you do with mm-hmm. it. I'll mm-hmm. mention, too, that a couple of years ago, I collaborated with about five other co-authors, and we wrote a book called Publishing as a Marketing Strategy, which is a wonderful resource. I encourage you to either go on my website, writeyourlife.net, to order it, or it's available on Amazon.com as well. But we talk about how we as professionals, as entrepreneurs, use publishing as a strategy to market our businesses. And it's a wonderful opportunity for anybody who is a an entrepreneur, a business owner, to utilize publishing to market your company and to build your brand. So it's pretty awesome as far as I'm concerned. Nash, anybody else in the chat room out there chatting away? You know, we're just getting some comments. I uh, don't see any more questions, but no Jared more questions. did respond, just so you know. Jared said... Thanks, Jared. Uh, uh, he, oh, I was just writing to get the ideas out of my head, but I ah. now understand I need a platform to consider. You absolutely need a platform, Jared. And I oftentimes people think that they'll develop their platform after the book is done. That's backwards. I really think you need to have a platform before your book is done, whether you go self-publishing or traditional. Because when you shop your, your manuscript or your book idea to traditional publishers, they're going to want to know how many followers do you have? What are you known for? How, how many people know about you? How long have you been out there? They're going to Google you, and they're going to be looking for the good, bad, and the ugly. So you better already be out there, and hopefully it's on the good side, on the positive side. But the same is true uh, as a self-publisher. Is you don't want to wait until your book is done before you say, okay, now I want to build a business. Now I want to establish a brand. Now you know I'm going to use this book to do this. Your book should actually leverage what you're already doing. Right. So if you're a speaker, for example, I, I speak to a lot of people who are uh, professional speakers, you already should have a platform. So perhaps your speaking thing is that you talk about health care or health, you know, health and fitness. But you've already established yourself as a health and fitness expert or professional, and you want to utilize your book to further enhance the platform or the brand that you're already building and so it should be a support not the beginning it should be a continuation not the beginning of your platform so i encourage you jared to go ahead and uh, start thinking about what you want to be known for consider the business idea that you have and then go back still write down those ideas because that's good um you know uh, content for your book then go back and write the book and say hey you know it's supporting this thing that i'm already doing and what i'm already known for So I'm going to take another question. This one is from Michael. He is one of our subscribers. Uh, He says, what is the trend on the popularity of e-books versus a traditional hard copy book? Wow. Mm. Who out there has an (laughs) e-reader? Well, hard copy, I thought this was really funny. Well, hard copy books become the eight track of the literary world. I love that. Ooh, Nash is like, oh my God, eight tracks. Bring back memories, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Thanks for the question, Michael. And I will tell you, I am very old school. I do have a Kindle. I love my Kindle. I love to read on my Kindle. But I also like a good, I want to turn the pages like this, you know. I posted something on Facebook uh, a couple of weeks ago that said, you know, I'm one of those people who likes to smell books. And people were like, smell? I've never heard of smelling a book. But I just love the feel of a book. I'm not alone, trust me. And it could totally be my age uh, group. But I did find some support for me, okay? There's some people <laughs> like me. <laughs> Princeton Survey Research Associates International recently did a survey, and they uh, reported some of their results, and they showed, now I don't know who they surveyed, I didn't look at all the, you know, the data and the, the statistics and stuff, but they did show that 70% of Americans read print books, read print books last year in 2013, but only 4% read ebooks exclusively. So there's a nice little crossover. I really don't think there's a one or the other. You don't have to choose either a print book or an ebook. And for most of the people I know who are book lovers, they do both. Um, The survey results also show that half of American adults own an ebook or uh, an an e-reader or a tablet. So we have the devices and we use them, but apparently, according to the results of this particular survey, American adults don't read ebooks exclusively. 
there's a nice little crossover. And I must say that I am among them. I would imagine that younger, and again, I don't know what the demographic is. Nash says, same here. I don't know what the demographic was on this particular study, but I would imagine that younger readers probably prefer um, their e-readers. They like their you know, iPad or whatever their e-reader is, their Kindle or whatever. But most of the adults that I know will do a crossover thing. They'll read some books on ease, some books as print. Um, of course, there are advantages with the e-readers because it's easier to carry how many books when you're on a trip, right, Nash? Right, Pam? Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the beach, you don't have to carry the stack of books. Right. And, you know, you just, you know, flip through and pick yeah. the one that you want to read. So that was a great question, Michael. Appreciate it. It's and like having a library. It's like having a library in the palm of your hand. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I so like that physical library, though. I like to I know. go and look at my library wall. Why? And, you know, Why do you like to books. do that? Why? You know, I, it reminds me of of what I've read or when I'm studying for something, I need those quick references. So okay. See if titles help. So I, I'll let you have that. That's fine. But I like my library. It just looks good. I'm yeah. serious. So it's all aesthetic <laughs> to me. It just... I don't know. Whenever I go into someone's house to visit, I want to look at their book yeah. shelf. I'm so serious. <laughs> so if you invite me over, I'm looking at your bookshelf. You know, how some people go in the bathroom, they look through your medicine cabinet. I don't even care. I want to look at, I don't know what you're reading, okay? I just want to know what you're reading. Um, but in, in terms of print books becoming the eight track, Michael, Mr. Smarty Pants, I don't think that they will be. Um, I guess at some point in the future, print books will go away. Just sadly as you know print newspapers and things like that are going away slowly um, but I think it'll be a while and I think we'll all still be alive uh, to see the continued existence of print books so that I've got my fingers crossed on that one anyway um, I think we're gonna take a quick break and acknowledge our uh, other sponsors and I hope that all the folks in the chat room will stick with us we will be right back Rachel quit the corporate grind to start her own interior design business. She's got a growing list of clients she keeps in touch with using email marketing from ConstantContact.com. Constant Contact is easy and affordable. It lets her send out updates and photos that showcase her expertise and inspire her customers for only $15 a month. Her dream? To be the area's hottest interior design office. Right now, she just dreams of an office. Hello everyone, I'm Pamela Adams, your favorite Chief Connection Officer, coming to you live from the BizLink Center. I'm actually coming to you live from the set of my newest show called That's My Biz. It's a business internet showcase where I interview companies and nonprofits about their products and services or their special cause. It's a great way to get the word out. Instead of doing that direct sales push, you're actually able to show that you've been interviewed. We have a special introductory offer going on for $99 where we give you the embed code to your video. What that means is you can put your interview directly on your own website. We also give you the link to your video so that you're able to promote it on your social networks so that you can drive that traffic to your website. Third, if you have a YouTube channel, we give you the video file so that you're able to upload the video directly to your own YouTube channel. It's a great way, again, for you to promote your business or your nonprofit. So if you're interested in our introductory offer, please contact us at That's My Biz at bizlinks.tv. Check us out, bizlinks.tv. Until next time, let's connect. What happens when soldiers come home? Brene Foundation offers hero support to ensure that our heroes abroad can continue to be heroes at home. We link veterans with organizations who are dedicated to guiding the transition from military hero to civilian hero. If you want to find out how you can support our troops at home, please contact the Brene Foundation or visit Brene.com. and welcome to our office. And I'm Dr. Cavallo. We're co-owners of AC Spine and Wellness. We've been located here in Lawrenceville for the past 21 years. We'd like to thank you in advance for looking at our website and for taking a virtual tour of our office with us. What we do is we work with people of all ages from birth through to senior citizens and we do it in a natural way. We want to get you healthy and keep you healthy. What we've done recently is integrated our office creating a chiropractic and a medical group together. What this does is allows you to get the optimal wellness that you deserve as a person.
thank you for visiting our office and our website and make sure you take time to go into our new patient section where we offer different specials monthly. And remember, we're trying to create a healthier world naturally. Okay. Okay, we just had a really engaging conversation. <laughs> in the studio about um, publishing. But anyway, I am, uh, welcome back. I'm Anita Paul, the author's midwife with writeyourlife.net. You are back here joining us. We appreciate it on Book Your Success. And we are asking Anita questions. I'm so glad to take all of your amazing questions. I appreciate it all. Thank you all for chiming in in the, in the chat room. I hope the rest of you identify yourselves and ask me a question. We've got a few more minutes. Before I go on, I do want to Acknowledge our sponsor once again, Intellectual Exchange Group, LLC. You can get in touch with them if you are interested in either for yourself as an adult or for a young person. Um, taking some courses in video or audio production, it's amazing, especially if you have your own business. You really need to know this stuff. But you can reach them at 404 234 Four three zero one Intellectual Exchange Group LLC. They have a phenomenal studio, excellent uh, video and audio equipment that you can learn a lot from. Trust me. Um, I want to give a shout out and give you a heads up about our guest for next week. So for those of you who know, we've been doing Book Your Success for a little over two years already, and typically we have a uh, a, a guest. I'm one on one with a with an author who is published and they get a chance to talk about their book, their process, the concept of their book and how they use it in their business. And next week, I'm so excited to talk to this young man, Deontay McIntosh. I met Deontay, ooh, maybe almost a year ago. Uh, Young Ambition is the title of his book. And he came to an engagement I did. I spoke to a, an organization and he told me that he was published. And interestingly, probably about six months later, our producer, Pamela Adams Alexander, ran into him at another event and uh, she invited him to be a guest on the show. So expect to see Deontay McIntosh on Book Your Success next time on the show. You know, we broadcast live the first and third Tuesdays at one o'clock p.m. Eastern. And uh, Deontay will be our guest next time. So find out about his book, Young Ambition. I'm excited to talk to him about that. But before we get to that, we're going to get back to some more questions. So again, I invite you in the chat room to toss out a question or two in these last few minutes that we have for the show. Um, I'm going to take a question from, I think this is someone who's a follower on LinkedIn. This is Keith who asked this question. Is there a certain time to incorporate social media as a part of your overall strategy for marketing a book. And I love questions about book marketing. Or is social media something that you think about after your book is published? Keith, thanks for your question. Never think about me marketing your book after uh, the book is done. You always wanna be thinking about marketing your book prior to the book actually coming out because there's so many things that you can do to get the word out about your book. So, And social media is certainly at the top of the list. Um, there are so many different social platforms, social media platforms that you can utilize and different ways to use each one of them. So just as a, a suggestion, you may want to, as you're going through the process of production of your book, as you're writing the content, as you're getting it uh, edited, as you have it reviewed by your beta readers or critiquers, you wanna start posting maybe some excerpts of your book. You may want to post on your blog or on your Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, you know, whichever of those social media sites works best for you. Perhaps you want to post your ups and downs and your challenges with the process of writing. You must understand that almost everybody, whether they admit it or not, would love to write a book, but the majority of people won't. However, they are very interested in the process and they're almost always going to be excited for you that you are actually taking the leap with both feet to get your book published. And so they want to know what it's like. What are the highs and the lows and the challenges and the successes that you've had in publishing your book? So they want to know what it was like to deal with the publisher and how you decided to uh, create your book cover. I have a client right now who we just finished um, her book cover and she very expertly posted a blog. She did a blog post about the process of coming up with the ideal book cover. And we had to go through a few iterations on that. Um, but we finally got one that uh, she likes and loves and she posted it. And so the book cover is out there um, a month or so before the book actually reaches the market. So now you've got people teased a little bit 
about your book. They're excited. They see the book cover. They know you're working on this and they were going to be asking you questions. And so you're really almost baiting your target audience uh, to be hungry for this book when it comes out. So don't wait until the book is complete before you start talking about it and marketing it. And certainly uh, utilize social media, your social networks, uh, your website, YouTube, your blog to start talking about uh, the process of writing your book. So we thanks for that, Keith. Appreciate that uh, question. I also want to mention to you that last year I worked with a wonderful publisher and author, Nicole Antoinette. We produced a book called How to Market Your Book Free. Wow. Free. Seriously? Free. Yes. Free. Free. <laughs> Look, I tell people free is my favorite price to pay. <laughs> my favorite price to pay. <laughs> So How to Market Your Book Free um, actually has over 100 free, yes, free, um, strategies to market your book, tips and ways to market your book online and offline. You can order the book again from my website, writeyourlife.net, or you can go to amazon.com uh, to order the book. And I'm telling you, you don't have to spend a boatload of money on marketing. There should be some budget in, you know, some money in your in your budget for marketing. But um, everything you do does not have to cost money. There are some wonderful free ways to market your book, and we talk about those in the book, How to Market Your Book Free. So pick that up, check it out, work it out. We've got another question from a LinkedIn follower. His name is Matt, and he says, I see from your website, Write Your Life, that you offer a course titled uh, write your book in 90 days or less. Is that possible? Matt says, is that possible? Uh, can you give me some idea? Nash is over there laughing. <laughs> can you give me some idea of the most important aspect with, of using your system? And do you encourage the use of outlines or just free flow writing to begin the process? So that's like five questions in one, Matt. Yes, I do <laughs> offer a course called... Um, Write your book in 90 days or less, and I'm just going to hold it up right here really quickly. It is actually, it is a course, and it uh, includes four uh, CDs of me teaching you how to write your book in 90 days or less. It also includes some instructional uh, worksheets and a bunch of other information about how to actually write your book in 90 days or less. So 90 days, that's three months. Are you kidding me? I can write my book in 90 days. Yes. That means getting you from, I've got a great idea. Two, here is what I consider is a complete manuscript, not a book in your hand, you know, totally, completely produced, but the first draft of your manuscript can be completed in 90 days or less when you are ready, when you are committed to the process and just ready to jump in with both feet. So yes, Matt, that can actually be done. It is actually possible to write your book in 90 days or less. You ask if I condone uh, or support outlining or free flow writing. I like both. I don't think there should be one or the other, but I absolutely um, encourage authors, especially first time authors, to use an outline. And in that course, Write Your Book in 90 Days or Less, there is a template. Uh, a very easy system that I use to help clients outline their books. It's so simple, you will be like, I could have had a V8. I mean, it's really, really easy. And it takes the stress out of trying to develop content that makes sense. So remember that you're writing for yourself first, typically. But if you are writing this book and producing it for public consumption, which is what I call it, when you want somebody to purchase your book and really get something out of it, it needs to be structured in a way that your readers will actually get something from it. So you can't just go spewing out all this stuff that you know, right? You have to structure the book so people can follow through with what you intend for them to get out of the book. And an outline helps tremendously with that. So once you develop your outline, then you can do all the free flow writing you want to do. Because today you may feel like you want to write uh, on chapter one, but tomorrow you might not feel like you want to write on chapter two. You may want to start writing about what you put in the outline for chapter five. So, and you should be able to freely do that, but it's not so easy when you don't have a, an outline. You're just writing, right? So develop your outline and then you can fill it in with the free flow writing that you want to do. But at least that free flow is structured and directed so that you're writing with a purpose and you're filling in chapters and sections of your book and not just writing because, gee, it's, you know, Tuesday and I feel like writing. So there. So Anita, is the 90 days just the writing part, not all of the rest of getting Correct. The done? Correct. Okay. Now what about the people that talk about write your book in a weekend? How realistic is that? I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I can't, I've never written a book in a weekend. <laughs> 
I honestly think that they are looking at structuring your book. I think that what they do in those courses is an outline. Okay. You develop a template or the structure for your book. And it's just, you know, sort of the theme of the book. And, you know, they may go through some planning, like who you're writing the book for and all that kind of stuff. But even in my 90-day class, and I'm sure in the weekend writing courses, it is not a book in your hand in 90 days or in a weekend. Mm -hmm. It is really the concept, a fully developed concept of what the book is. So in the 90 day, in my 90 days program, it is a complete manuscript. It's what you feel is complete and ready to go to a copy editor. Not I'm still working on chapter five or I'm still trying to finish the ending. None of that. In 90 days or less, you should be able to write your book, the first draft of your manuscript, not have a book in your hand. So that's what that's all about. Jared and, oh, Jill, actually. Hi, Jill. Jill joined the chat room along with Jared and Sherry, and so we welcome Jill and uh, invite you to ask a question, Jill. I think we've got just a few more minutes in the show. Um, so let's see. That was Matt's question. What do we have? This one is from Liz. Liz, um, actually, I think she came from Facebook, and so we thank you for uh, following us on Facebook. Liz says, I'm a blogger with tons of blog posts targeted to a specific audience, and I might have a pretty good following across all social platforms. So I say congratulations to you, Liz. Can I use any of my blog posts in a book? Hmm. Ha. Ha. How would you suggest I start? <laughs> and is there someone who might help guide me along this process, and what is that person called? Why do you guys have these like super multiple questions for me? But I'm going to answer all of them. So I think it's awesome that you have a blog. I think it's amazing that you have a, a following across several social platforms. And I say, yes, you can use your blog posts in a book. Um, I think that's one of the, I won't say easiest, but perhaps um, sensible ways to develop content for your book. If you journal, if you blog, if you do presentations and speeches, those wonder those things are wonderful content for your book. This is stuff you've talked about already, and it should relate to your platform. I'm always going to go back to platform. So I hope, Liz, that whatever you're blogging about has a purpose or a focus. So maybe you're a mommy blogger and you're blogging about being a mom and the life of a busy mom. So hopefully all your blog posts focus on that and you're interested in writing a book about being a mom, not, you know, about... Uh, travel or something like that. Hopefully whatever your, the uh, theme and the focus of your book is relates to the theme and focus of your blog posts and your social media interactions. So yes, you can use your blog posts as content for your book. How do you get started? I think you take a look at the blog posts you have and categorize them. Uh, go back to what I just said in terms of outlining your book. What are the, the main things that you want to talk about in your book and make those chapters or sections or something and then take those blog posts that you already have and just sort of push them into those different categories. So maybe again, we'll go back to the mommy blogger thing and you are blogging about, you know, you may, you may have five or six blog posts about being a working mom and how hard it is to juggle or how challenging or how much fun it is to juggle all these things, work and business and family and that kind of thing. So maybe you have five or 10 blog posts specifically related to that. Put all of those in a section. That's one section or one chapter of your book. And perhaps, Liz, you also blog about, um, you know, uh, also, you know, some of the being involved in your kids' activities, right, as a busy mom. And so you've got about 15 or 20 different blog posts about that. Um, put those in a separate section, and you can make that a chapter of your book. So that's kind of how you structure your book utilizing your blog posts, okay? So you already have the content. It just needs to be categorized, so to speak. And those categories could be chapters or sections in your book. And then you ask, is there someone who can help guide you through this process and what is that person called? So my moniker is the author's midwife and I consider myself a coach and consultant to aspiring and existing authors. Some people are called book coach. Uh, they're a writing coach if you feel like you need someone to specifically help you with the writing part of it. But for me as a consultant, I help with the entire process of self-publishing book production and marketing and leverage. So we, you know, I talk with my clients about more than just the writing aspect. We also go into um, marketing and uh, platform and a lot of different things. And so, so you can either enlist a writing coach, a book coach, or an author's coach. 
and any one of those people can assist you. And I say good luck to you. And if you need help with any of that, be sure to email me at Anita at writeyourlife.net. So that was Liz's question. And um, I'm going to just sort of wrap it up now. We've got several other questions here, everybody, <laughs> that we can't get to in one show. So I invite you to watch Book Your Success, again, the first and third Tuesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern. We're here on bizlinks.tv. We'll do Ask Anita again another time, but I want to make sure that you stay tuned and, and join us next time for our guest, Deontay McIntosh, Young Ambition is the name of his uh, book. And I'm excited to be talking to Deontay next time. Until then, I want to say thanks to our producer, Pamela Adams Alexander, for, for all of her expertise. <laughs> and I want to say thanks to Nash Alexander for being in the studio today. Thanks to every. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so badly. I love that. Thanks to everybody who joined us in the chat room. Thanks for all of our viewers and all of our fans on social media. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for supporting us uh, for these last two years. We'll see you next time on Book Your Success. Great show. Woo! Can't wait for next time. Yes. <laughs>